All right, so <clears throat> where we ended last time was we were starting to show the setting ourselves up to show the more info about the comic. So I've got my app running in the simulator. And I've already uh, gone through Save Comic. I've saved a couple of comics. You can still fill in just placeholder stuff or start to fill in a, re a little bit of real data because what we're going to start, then start to see is the data that's been saved. Now this table looks completely basic. Uh, we're going to spruce it up with CSS. For example, the table right now only is as big Oh, is there a uh, an alert happening somewhere? Yeah, it's very much. Oh yeah, that one. Uh, just give that one back. That one's cursed or something. I need to remember to remove that from the gen pop. Okay, so here we've got the, uh, the table, which is kind of basic. For example, it's only as big as the content inside of it, uh, which will look awkward as you have different sizes of content. Well, through CSS, we'll be able to style that. Also, as you start to add more comics, that table is going to get harder to read. So later on, we're going to add something called zebra striping. Has anyone heard of that concept before, zebra striping? What would it be? Yes, yeah, so every other line of a table or some sort of data is a different color. It might alternate between a couple of colors, and that's often a little easier to read. So we'll do that too. Th via CSS, we will alternate colors to make it readable. Through CSS, we will change the size of the table and the colors of headings and all of that. So it's going to look basic for a little while. I've added two comics so far, and my console tells me we have the data, two objects and therefore they display right there, in my case, The Amazing Spider-Man and Batman. And again, because of the, our hard work that we did detecting the, or of, or whatever, the, the T is not used in the alphabetization of the data. A is before B. Okay, where we last left off was that we were starting to set ourselves up to click that little More Info button, that little speech bubble. And the last where we ended it was that if you were to click on it, and I'll run over the code what happens in a moment, but you are supposed to be able to click on it. You don't get the little finger to click like a website because eventually when it's on a real device there is no pointing finger. You just click it, right? So it doesn't look like it's clickable at the moment, but if it worked, you click on it, it'll say that the comics info, show comics info function is running. It'll say a whole kind of weird output, but the important thing is that it should say is that there is a TR, there, there is a table row of data that you clicked on. When you further open up that data with that triangle, there's more extra stuff. But then you look at zero, more stuff. But then you'll see an entry scrolling down. You'll see a few entries. Inner HTML, and that's the whole line that made up that row. There's a cell in it, TD, with that title. There's another cell with the number, and then there's a cell with a class of the speech bubble. Inner text, the text that's actually in that row, excluding the code, is the title of the comic, the number of the comic, the speech bubble. And up here, it also uh, detects that there's an ID, data-ID, attached to that row which is a unique ID for that particular comic I clicked on. If I compare that with the other comic I have there, I'll click the other speech bubble, I get another output that says you clicked on a row. If I open that up and scroll down into zero, I'll see that. The ID attached to that row, Batman 19401, plus all of the code in that row, and then the raw text in there, should appear. So that's where we last left off the output from clicking. The way that worked, 
if we go back to index.js, our index.js file, at the end where we've got all of our event listeners, remember you can press Control end to go to the very end of the document. There's a big note there with one line, uh, one command that I broke into two lines. <coughs> well, we've got the usual. There's some sort of element that we want to click on for something to happen. But in this case, it's more targeted because actually we're saying uh, regarding this element on a click of a sub-element of that element, once you click on this, which is inside of this, once you click on it, run a function. Well, not just running the function, we need to pass in data to the function. We're using the this jQuery selector, which specifies this is the thing we clicked on, this speech bubble, which is not what I care about. I care about all the data in that whole row. So we're saying, it's this bubble that we clicked on, but the parent element. The bubble is inside of a cell, and that cell is inside of a row. That's the parent. That whole row is a parent. It has then child data, a cell. You can have parent and child and grandparent and grandchild uh, relationships of data. It's just this is inside of this, inside of this. This is inside of this. So we're saying, let's select the whole row. Basically, that is, select the whole row. Pass the data into this function, which requires the anonymous function syntax. It's just the way you, you do it. So we're passing the whole row into that function. And then if I back up the function definition, we barely started it, which is right there. It says, the function is running to the console, display the row. And that's what I was showing in the developer's console. As you opened up the data, you saw <clears throat> that that row is full of a bunch of properties. All of those things that pop up from, the, um, from that little triangle are all of the properties associated with that row. So you think that there's only something in particular, all of this stuff. There is. You know, there are various attributes, base URI, background color set to nothing. That's why it's transparent. There are three child elements. That makes sense. One, two, three. There's three cells in that. Um, then this is a list of those particular child nodes. And it has a 30 pixel height and all of that. So all of that is built in. That was a table row. The next sibling, the next thing in the data is another row, another TR. So anyway, all of that data is embedded in saying this. Pass into the function the parent data of this thing that I clicked on, which was the bubble. And then we'll run our function. So. That's where we ended up with last time. We're going to expand on this. Does that kind of make sense? Any further questions on that? Um, the way that works. <clears throat> OK, well, what further needs to happen here is show comics info. The purpose of this function is to display on screen all of the fields of the comic in question. So next line here. Line 478, uh, create a variable that keeps track of the underscore ID of the currently selected row of comics.
in the table at the moment, we're only displaying two pieces of data. The, the title of the comic and the number of the comic. But the comic has a year, publisher notes, and photo, etc. So all of that data is still back in the database. We haven't chosen to display it on screen. So we need to pay attention to what's the idea of the current comic, and now once we know it, go to the database and get me the rest of the data to display. We'll create a variable, and we will call this temp comic. This is the comic temporarily that we're dealing with. That's going to come from this comic dot data parentheses quotes ID. This comic is the shorthand of the row that we passed into the function. When we had the event listener, it said this dot parent. That was the long way to say the currently selected row. All of that gets passed into this function with this parameter. This parameter, this row, has a data dash ID associated with it. So we're saying, let's check what is that ID that is stored in this particular row. We'll store it in that variable. Knowing that ID, then we can retrieve the rest of the data from the database. To test if this is working properly, we'll have a console output and say this TR has a data dash ID of temp comic save it and run it make sure you've got at least two comics saved so we can fully test it make sure you've got you know two or three or four comics saved to fully test it click on the speech bubble and in your console you should see this output that says you know which row did you click on what was the ID associated with it and it should match up with the row that you clicked on. If it says undefined or something unexpected, we want to fix that, of course, before we go on. We'll go off and check your console to see if you are getting that feedback of the row you're, you've been clicking on. Let me check mine. So I'm going to run this in the browser. I'm going to save one more comic just to have something saved here. Okay, so I've got three comics saved here. I'm also going to clean my console just so that I can kind of focus on what I've got here. When I click on the second comic, this table row has a data ID of Batman 1940. One. I can confirm that by looking at the row of data up here. Remember that data set ID is Batman 1941. If I click on the other comic, this table row has a data ID of Zero Girl 2001, number two. So you should see the output of the ID, the data dash ID attribute associated with the row. If I save another comic, if I view the comics, we've got four comics. 
I'm going to clear my console here. Sometimes it's useful to clear everything out just for readability. Clicking that little no symbol. And then I click on the newly added comic. And of course, they alphabetize. I click on that, and it says this row has Thor 2018 1. <clears throat> So that's what this code is doing here so far. We're just confirming <coughs> that we are reading the data-id property of that row. Now thinking a little bit outside the box, um, this can be used to read or write this information. Um, anything da data-whatever. If this row had a data dash transition, that's what I'm saying here. What was the transition applied to this element? If I had an icon attached, which is data dash icon, this method, this command, retrieves data dash something, and the something goes here, and we retrieve it. We can also set it. I have to double check how that one is done. But in our case, we've got data-id, and we're capturing that and storing it into the variable. After storing the ID of the row in question, the comic in question, we use it to retrieve all the data of that comic to display on screen. If we've used db.put to save something to the database, uh, what was the command to retrieve from the database? One thing at a time? Get. db.get. All docs will get all of the data from the database. db.get allows me to get one thing from the database, which is based on the ID, with the ID which I'm currently storing in tempcomic. And as usual, when we have a uh, pouch command, when we attempt to do something, there will always be the result of a f callback function of failure or success. So comma, next comes the function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace. There is either a failure that happened or a success. We have to deal with the binary result of either failure or success. So as we've done before, we'll have that if-else conditional statement to check if it was a failure, do something, or else it wasn't a failure, it was a success, so do something else. I'm going to break apart the, uh, those curly braces and mark it that that's the end of db.get. And then inside of the curly braces, I'm creating my if-else conditional statement to deal with if it, was if it was a failure or if it was successful. So we still have other operations we will need to do. So far we've done db.put to put to the database, db.alldocs to get everything from the database, uh, db.get uh, to get one thing. We'll have some other ones, uh, db.destroy or remove one of those. But in almost every one of these pouch commands, then there is some failure or success. And then we have an if-else. So we'll see that over and over. 
And so here then, we're saying if there was a failure returned, if after trying to get that comic we got a failure, we need to deal with that. And for the moment, we'll put some console output so that we can troubleshoot it. And say, couldn't show this comic. The comics ID in question, we're just outputting it. We, we can't we couldn't show this comic for some reason. The some reason is inside the failure object. So we could further say error and say what that failure object was to try to troubleshoot it. In the testing for this project at this point, this shouldn't cause errors. We've created our code good enough up to this point before that there shouldn't be a condition of trying to load a comic that doesn't exist. Clicking on the bubble <clears throat> should show the comic. Well, that comic should exist because it's in the row, it's in the table. That there should not be some like mystery comic appearing in the table that was never saved. So there shouldn't really be a way for this failure to ever happen, but we've got some console output. To make it more complete, we could have a pop-up to the user and such, but again, this is something we need to fix before it goes to the user. The good stuff will happen under else. Console log showing comic success.title so what happens here if we did retrieve a comic that does exist all its data is now in the success object. All pre-existing properties fields are there. When we created our comic, we are saving a title field, a number field, a notes field, so we can access each of the fields associated with this particular comic by referencing the object and then dot what property, what field. And at the moment to test it, I want to confirm um, that I'm seeing the title of this comic. Save it and run it. Try it out. Look in your console. It won't appear on screen yet. We haven't made the pop-up <coughs> appear yet. But in your console, you should be getting some feedback. You should have a few comics saved. They should appear in the table. When you click the little bubble, you should see out in the console either errors, probably not errors, but you should then see showing the comic and then the title of the comic, the particular comic you clicked on. So check that in the browser. Let me check mine's working. Remember, also check your error list before you output. Maybe it'll pick up something before you try to test it. So I'm going to clear my console. I'm going to view the comics. I'm going to click on Thor. So it says the same as before. This row has a data ID of that. Showing comic Thor. That's the title of this comic. If I click on this first row, this comic, The Amazing Spider-Man. There's the unique ID without the, and then the comic with the the is there. And if I look at Zero Girl, there it is, comic, showing comic of Zero Girl. So 
So is that is that working? Before we go further, are you seeing the title of your of your comic in the console?
All right, so at this point we've got the uh, title outputting to the uh, to the console. Well, if I can confirm that it is seeing the title of the comic and every other property in that object, then that means I can start to, to display the those fields on screen. Remember, we have a pop-up that has all of the fields. So I want to display the success.title, success.year, success.publisher, um, whatever. I want to display all of that in these boxes, I mean in these paragraphs that I created in the HTML file. So let's review something here. Let's go to the index.html file. Let's go find our pop-up, our info pop-up, one of the last things in the code. Let's look at this to remind ourselves. In the view comics, this is at about line 220. In the view comics, in PG pop, or not PG, but ID pop view comics info, we've got a div with all of these paragraphs where we want to display the title of the comic or name, the number, the year, publisher, etc. So we've got all of these like placeholders inside of a placeholder. We have the main div with a unique and named ID, which then we want to put the data into each of those paragraphs. So if we go back to our JavaScript, we're in the else portion. We successfully showed that we're getting some, some title back. We're going to say, now, populate every placeholder paragraph in the pop-up. Div view comics info is the object is the placeholder where those paragraphs exist. I'm doing it here again, the quick and dirty way about <coughs> let's just reference that div and let's do something with it instead of creating a variable where I've got all my variables and referencing it there. This is again another way to do it. There's no wrong or what wrong or right way. I'm showing you both. I often show how to do something more than one way for you to decide which way you like or which way makes more sense. So here then, don't forget the pound sign. Using the jQuery selector, let's go select something with an ID of div comics info. And what I want to do in that placeholder is write some HTML. I want to write the title of the comic. Uh, I want to write some HTML in that. Now, logically, do you follow what's going on here? But in a syntax way, it's not quite right. This is saying, this, do, this still doesn't know that we mean the first paragraph. Because we have over here the first paragraph for name and the second for number and year and publisher. What we're doing right here is going to basically replace all of these paragraphs with just the title of the comic. I want to put the title of the comic in the first paragraph. So further here, inside of the quotes, space, paragraph. So now here we're saying, let's select, reading from right to left, a paragraph inside of that div. In that space there is very important. And I'll put it in the notes in a moment. But this paragraph, we're saying, find a paragraph inside of this div, write the title. Uh, that's still not quite there. Which paragraph do I mean? I've got seven or eight of them. OK, further. We've got P, then we'll do colon. EQ equals paragraph equals the paragraph in question. I've got seven paragraphs. I need to put the number of which paragraph I mean, counting from zero. So reading from right to left. Find a paragraph that equals zero, the first paragraph, inside of this div. 
let's write some HTML, the title of the comic. If you copy that line exactly as is and paste it, you have to change two things. Now we'll deal with the second paragraph. And in the second paragraph, I'm showing the number of the comic, so success.number. Paste it again. Now I'm dealing with the third paragraph, which is 2, because we start from 0. And we're saying in that paragraph, show success.year, the year of the comic. And do you see then the next one? 0, 1, 2, 3, publisher, and notes. We don't have barcode yet, so we'll skip it for the moment. We don't have image yet. And I'll paste it again. Now we're dealing with the fourth paragraph. Paragraph equal to 3, which is then publisher. Fifth paragraph, or fifth paragraph, uh, index number four, uh, is notes. The notes field that's stored in the success object, which represents the, all of the data of the current comic in question. So here, just a logically easy thing sequentially, the paragraph that equals 0, the first one, the paragraph that equals 1, the second one, let's write some HTML into each of those. We won't see this on screen yet. We haven't made the pop-up appear. But we've also got the barcode. We've got, a, we've got a placeholder for barcode, but we haven't saved barcode data yet, so we'll ignore it for the moment. Question? Why is you and not just a This is syntax that is jQuery specific. Uh, in a regular old equals would be a regular old um, plain old JavaScript. But remember, equals in plain JavaScript is basically saying assignment or take the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left. So it wouldn't quite work here because we've got, first of all, um, objects that we've created in jQuery. So we're using jQuery uh, methods to manipulate them. And built into jQuery is the ability for us to select something in a sequential manner. So that's the purpose of the eq equals. This, this is a particular paragraph that equals this number in our series of paragraphs. The, no, uh, the barcode we're going to skip and the image we're going to skip for the moment, but what we could do is give ourselves a note here to do add barcode info and to do add image info. We're not there yet. We haven't saved that data, so if we try to display it, it'll say undefined or some sort of weird message. Lastly, to make this pop up up here, we have to use code familiar to uh, familiar to us in terms of moving from screen to screen. So we have okay now populate every placeholder paragraph in the in the pop up. Uh, we use the eq. What's it called exactly? Pseudo selector, I believe. Pseudo selector to select. A paragraph from a sequence of paragraphs starting from zero. We almost always start from zero in computer counting um, systems. So we populate every place for the paragraph in the pop up. We use EQ to select a paragraph from a sequence, a paragraph that equals a particular position. Once those things are populated into it, it's not visible to the user yet. So then display the pop-up using page 
page container, jQuery mobile method, jQuery mobile command. And we've seen this before as the jQuery selector quotes colon mobile dash page container dot page container. Remember this one we had, let's log in. And once we've confirmed their email and password, let's change them from PG login to PG welcome. So this is the same command, but we'll change it for a pop-up. We're saying basically selecting from the current page. We're going to do something with the, with the current page container. We're going to change. We're going to change to, to look at the, the name of that pop-up, the, the div, I mean the ID of that particular pop-up, which is pop view comics info. Pound pop view comics info. We've seen this before. Move from PG login to PG home. Well, I want this to happen like a pop-up. If we don't specify, this will change. It will change the whole screen to another screen. I don't want that. I want a pop-up to overlay on top of the current screen. So, comma, we need the options, which are in JSON format, where we say then, quotes role colon dialogue data role is a dialogue make this pop-up behave make this screen behave like a pop-up then display the pop-up using page container jQuery method at this point, you should be able to save it and test it. And finally, if you click on one of those speech bubbles, you should have a pop-up box appear because of that line. But more importantly, all of the fields that we have so far, data, should be populated with what you've saved into the database. It still needs some polish, which we'll get to. Let me confirm mine. We'll take a break in a moment. Let me confirm mine works. I go to View Comics. I'm going to click Batman. Pop up. Batman number 1, 1940, DC. Barcode is empty. Image doesn't appear because there's no image yet. And it sh says I'm showing Batman. Delete and edit don't work yet because we haven't programmed them to work yet. Eventually, this will have the barcode. This will have the photo. If we've got a photo, it'll have the notes. I didn't write notes on this comic, so notes box is missing. Now, also, the default is hmm, it's missing its same title, and it's missing its same number and year, and so forth. So to polish that up, we used the HTML method which replaces what's in that paragraph with something new. So it's missing number, name number, etc. One way to fix it, and we'll talk about other ways also, is, well, we need to write it again. And we can write HTML here. We can write here an HTML tag, which I didn't have before. I, before it simply said name colon. Well, I can write valid HTML and CSS inside of this HTML method and then it'll process it. So what I'm doing is I'm making it say name, but bold, which is strong. Um, don't forget a space somewhere, either right there or after strong. And then it'll show the title. So then on the next line, something very similar, I need this is where you can copy and paste what is the text I'm writing plus the object. 
So next I'm saying the number of the comic plus success.number. Next I'm saying the year of the comic plus year. Publisher and notes. And if you didn't fill anything out in the publisher or notes like I did, it'll just be empty because there's no data saved saved there. Testing mine. View comic. I'll click my first comic. Pop up. Fills it in there. The name, the number, the year, publisher. Uh, I, I type name twice, I guess. Not notes. Name. See? Computers are dumb. They do exactly what you tell them. I meant to type here name or notes. Anyway, so then uh, I click on a different comic. I close that box. It, it has an automatic close button because it's got data dialog property. You can close that. And then when I open these other comics, these should populate. So if I create a brand new comic and save that, and then view, it's got the new comic in alphabetical order. And then I click the view more info button, and it pops up with the latest comic right there. And we'll get to delete and edit, of course, but that's what we want so far. So. We'll take our first break. Um, I'll put my code in the folder. We'll confirm it works up to this point, and then we'll keep going. We, we're saving comic information. Now we're starting to retrieve the comic information. We'll set ourselves up to delete comics. And a little harder, edit the comic data. And ultimately, what I also want to do is instead of deleting comics one at a time, I want a way to I want a way to delete the whole comic database to start over. So we still have those things to do. It's 6:50. We'll take a break until seven, and then we'll go on.